All right, look, just occasionally, you know, it's the end of the year. And I'm sure I, like many of, uh, others of you, it's been quite a year. And you look forward, you see the finish line. And the last, I don't know, 20 metres has become quite hard. But over the weekend, the story just, just cheered me up. It was in the Timaru Herald. I read it online. And I just want to read the uh, uh, by a woman called um, Catherine Hubbard. And Catherine Hubbard's opening paragraph in this news story was as follows. Pleasant Point's very un-PC Christmas procession includes a faux royal family, including Ginger and the Winger, and a Prince Andrew sitting alongside a pair of schoolgirls in uniform in what proved once again to be a very unconventional event. Well, I read on because that opening paragraph just grabbed me, grabbed my sense of humour, and I think was just a wonderful way to uh, describe an event which seems to me to be uniquely New Zealand. The Pleasant Point Christmas procession. Now, I have never spent much time in Pleasant Point, apart from a rather rugged uh, Nelson College First 15 training camp back in 1982, I think that was, or 80, 82. Um, so I wanted to find more, out more about this. It's certainly wonderfully Kiwi Christmas pro uh, procession. So on the line now, we have the chair of the Pleasant Point Christmas Procession Committee, and his name is Richard Peckett. Richard, welcome to the platform. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Good morning, Gary. How no, are no, you? No, it's Sean, not Gary. Gary's oh, Sean, sorry. Yeah, sorry. yeah, Gary's the guy who I think is going to be working for Today FM out of Christchurch because Tova couldn't get any ratings oh. there. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, <Sean. laughs> that's all right, Richard. Now, Richard, I, I read the story in the Timaru Herald and I just love the opening paragraph. Tell us about this Christmas parade. Is it deliberately aiming to be unwoke and unpolitically correct? Um, well, it, it is. The parade itself, we, we just organise the parade and we say anything goes. Um, so over the years, it's become a chance for people to make a statement about what they're not happy with. Um, and that's what people do. So it's often done tongue-in-cheek. But there's a there's generally a uh, you know sort of a, a deeper meaning behind it. All right, Richard. How long has it been going, and how long has it been, has it been run like this? Um, well, it's been going for over sixty years. Um, it started out as basically a free night throwing lollies out for the local kids. Um, how long it's been like this, I'm not sure. I've been involved with it for a bit over twenty years, and it's always had this this. Uh, if you want to call it political aspect or topical well, slightly aspect. subversive. <laughs> slightly uh, subversive. Yes, yes, definitely, yes, yes. And it's a case of, you know, it's a rural area and people often just like to sort of bend the rules a bit and say, well, this is what we think. Yeah. So, um, yeah. How many people in Pleasant Point, how many floats do you have? Or, well, I don't know if they're floats, how many participants? Well, the the township has a population of about 1,300, I think. Uh, but, of course, it's a rural area. So what what happens is the floats can be a real mixture of, um, of like, vintage vehicles, traction engines, uh, local community groups. But what happens is often the local districts, the wee rural districts, they tend to be the ones that make statements uh, about, what it is so there might be just a valley over the hill or something and a few people will get together and say this is what we're going to do and they'll say this um, will be a laugh let's do this i mean look yeah. some of this is pretty edgy isn't it the prince yes, andrew stuff i mean do you have a lawyer who vets this stuff or is it <laughs> whoa fingers crossed let's hope for the best <laughs> no it's just everybody stands and laughs and says oh ooh, that's a bit close but no we don't have a lawyer no no and the whole point is we don't know who's going to turn up and what they're going to do. Okay, give us a taste of this year. I understand. Now, now I, I did think this might be, under the new hate speech laws, uh, pretty dodgy, you had a reference to a bomb and Labour Party headquarters. Um, again, it, we didn't do it, but a, a person who was in the parade, he also, it was actually a reference to one for Ukraine and one for Labour Party headquarters and one for Three Waters. It was actually, he had uh, quite a few bombs on it. And it was just, that was his opinion. You've got to remember, it's it's just a people's personal opinion. Oh, Richard, hang on. Hang on, you're living in New Zealand under a Labour government in 2022 and you're suggesting the idea that just having your opinion and expressing it is okay? I'd like to think it was. <laughs> 
So would I. So would I, my friend. <laughs> okay. So, so you've also had the ginger and the winger, which uh, and yes. look, that was brilliant. Whose idea was that? Again, it was the local district. Just put it in. Um, they would have got together probably the night before or maybe even on the afternoon, and just said, oh, well, what are we going to do? And, again, it's topical, isn't it? You know, so, so yeah. It's, and it's, tell us about yeah. Jacinda's EV. Uh, which one was that? That was an old vehicle that had been poked up, hadn't it, into that. Again, it was just somebody saying, well, this is what we're going to do. I mean, there was actually somebody there brought some horses and said, well, when fuel hits $6, that's what we're going to be using. Oh, that's it? right, the horses. diesel the, the diesel price side. Yeah. Look, this yeah. sounds like a bloody hoot. Uh, it really does, Richard. Do you all have yeah, a bit of a is. knees up yeah. afterwards? Um, the, well, the whole town, it's sort of party night for the whole town. Um, and uh, some of the local businesses make it their Christmas function. The pub gets packed, they put a band on in the pub, there's barbecues happening up and down the street. It is just a community event um, that everybody just gets together and people from outside the area do come to watch it. It's getting people to come and view it. Cause do you have sponsorship or anything? No. Well, yes and no. The council do give us a donation towards uh, towards running it and they do help with all the road closure because we have to close the main... Do you road. have a karakia to open the event? A uh, what, sorry? A karakia. No, we have a pipe band that goes down the street. That's how we start it. Right, no karakia. Obviously, then, you're not in Dargaville, are you? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. Look, no. R R Richard, I, I am just so tickled by the whole idea of the Pleasant Point Christmas Parade and your, <laughs> your rather, I think, admirable disregard <laughs> for um, the conventions of woke society. Um, I'd love for the platform to be involved Um next year if you are looking for maybe a sponsor. or I just think you could take this and make it like, wow, like the world of wearable arts. <laughs> this could be a global bloody event, you know, and I think people could flock from around the South Island, around New Zealand to go to the kind of no-holds-barred satirical um, uh, Christmas parade. Yes, it is a satirical. You've probably hit the nail on the head there. It is satirical. And the, it's always been that we, we organise the parade and say we'll be there for seven o'clock on Friday night, and who turns up, turns up, and that's that. Uh, Richard, do you actually have a centre? Yes, we do, actually. The, the, uh, behind it all, we do, the committee does put a float in, and Santa comes down on his float and throws lollies out for the kids, and then is available later for the kids to go up and do the Santa wishes. So, yes, yeah, right. behind it all, there is a seriousness. And you are diverse um, and gender tolerant, you're rainbow tick. Approved, I imagine, as an organisation? Uh, oh, yes. Yes, but again, it's a rural area, but, um, yeah, we anything goes, yeah. yeah. I just love the story, Richard. It's one of those things that's put a smile on my dial. Uh, <laughs> thank you very, very much uh, to you and other members of the committee and indeed the, the people of Pleasant Point for reminding us that we shouldn't take ourselves or indeed others uh, too seriously. Uh, and I wish well, you a very, very Merry Christmas. Thank you very much, Sean, and uh, it's nice to know you, the people are interested in what we do. Thank Good you idea. Very much. That is Richard Peckett, the um, the chair of the Pleasant Point Christmas Parade Committee. Bloody hell, I'm almost inclined to put that in my calendar for next year or send Ben or someone down to cover it. Jeez, it sounds like a lot of fun. It really does. <laughs> uh, someone says, uh, line of the day, do you have a karakia? What's that? We have a pipe band. <laughs> Maybe that... <laughs> Maybe that question and response sums up really what things are like out there in most of New Zealand amongst the silent majority. And the new newspaper scream about Mr Jepson and the Karakaya and Dargaville, and I asked someone from the South Island, do you guys have a Karakaya? What's that? Well, you have a pipe bed. <laughs> I kind of like it. I kind of like it. Um, Sean, former Aucklander who now lives in Pleasant Point, honest and real amongst so much... Uh, untruth. The name says it all. Come on down. Yeah, Pleasant Point, it's called. It's a small farming community outside of Timaru. I spent a few brutal hours and days there uh, when I was my first year in Nelson Cod's first 15, and we went down there for a training camp. We didn't quite live under canvas, but it was close, 4Ks a morning, and rugby all day. It was brutal. It was brutal. It still has the scars. 
But hell, that uh, Christmas parade. Look, if you were at the Pleasant Point Christmas parade, you've ever been to the Pleasant Point Christmas parade, I would love to hear from you in the next uh, wee while.